Alright, hello guys, how's it going? From the time I am uploading this video, Hurricane Hannah has just formed in the Gulf of Mexico. Now before I get started with this video though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather related content and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. So for today's comment of the day, I want to know, when do you think we will have our second Atlantic hurricane? Because well, we just saw our first one form, alright, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get into this video, and first off, I want to talk about Tropical Storm Gonzalo because this is probably a farewell message because it looks like it looks like Gonzalo is going to dissipate here, guys. It has not been a good a good 24 hours for Gonzalo, as I've been mentioning for two days straight. Uh, it's been looking progressively worse and worse for Gonzalo, and here we go. Looking at the satellite imagery, you can tell it's basically just a cluster of thunderstorms at this point. Uh, Gonzalo, I think, is pretty much a lost cause here. Uh, let's go ahead and look at that intensity guidance very quickly for Gonzalo, and as you can see, it is basically going to drop out of tropical storm status, except for the ship model, which wants to show it going back towards hurricane status. I highly doubt it. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on to our Hurricane Hannah. I know that's so weird to say. I'm expecting major impacts for Texas. We'll be talking about the winds, rain, coastal flooding, things like that, the storm surge. So please, please, please stay tuned for that. That's important information if you live on the South Texas coast. Now, first things first, here's our cone forecast from uh, the National Hurricane Center for Hurricane Hannah. Again, that's so weird to say. You can see we do have a hurricane and it's going to reach the South Texas coast there. And then it's going to quickly become a tropical storm, tropical depression, and then post-tropical depression over Mexico where it is going to dissipate. All right, so there's a lot to talk about, obviously. We do have a hurricane in the Gulf. This has been such a big surprise. Like, I'm not even going to lie to you guys. I was not necessarily expecting Hannah to become a hurricane by any means. Then again, I don't really think anybody was necessarily expecting it to become a hurricane, though these Gulf storms can be very, very surprising as we've seen here. Here's our current hazards. It's been a long time since I've shown this, but obviously this is very important. So we have a tropical storm warning there in those darker red shades. And then in that middle red shade, you can see there's a little bit of a difference there. It's more of a cherry red there. That's where we have a hurricane warning. That's where we're expecting hurricane conditions. Actually, a few counties inland there. So we're expecting uh, some pretty windy conditions here. Also, some pretty large amounts of rainfall. Again, I will be showing you guys all of those impacts later on in this video. We have a flash flood watch up there to the north of these areas, up the coast. That's just where we're expecting more chance for flooding, less chance for winds, and even a tornado warning in there. You can see that little red dot in there up the up the Texas coast there, and that's where we're already starting to see some tornadic activity from this one, which is very, very common in tropical systems. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on, take a look at the low pressure center, the location of it, uh, the satellite imagery, the spaghetti models, things like that, and then we're going to start getting into impacts, storm surge, rainfall, total winds. We're going to look at all three major models, the European, GFS, and the Canadian model on all three of those impacts, or all two of those, the storm surges directly from the National Hurricane Center, and then we're going to start talking about the new tropical invest coming off the coast of Africa briefly. All right, so here's our low pressure center here. You can see it is pretty far offshore of Texas there. Uh, but again, it is pretty much racing uh, to the west, and it is going to hit South Texas there, uh, and again, bring some pretty hefty impacts to say the least. Uh, so here is our satellite imagery, and as you can see, it is just such a beautiful storm here. Uh, those grays and whites are indicating very tall clouds there where this storm has just really gained intensity. Obviously, a Category 1 hurricane, we aren't expecting an eye wall or anything yet. Um, on these weaker hurricanes, uh, but the winds are going to be quite hefty. Uh, and seeing as we have a lot of these clouds making their way on shore, I'm sure we are already starting seeing some impacts. That's why I've started this video so early, and hopefully it will be out earlier than my normal video because there is important information I obviously need to get out uh, earlier today because we are expecting this hurricane to literally move on shore this afternoon. So the information obviously needs to get out as quickly as possible. Now here's our... Uh, spaghetti models here and you can see obviously we pretty much know where this one's gonna go South Texas uh, it's going to move generally just directly westward here uh, and then kind of south into Mexico the impacts are gonna spread much further north than the low pressure center 
uh, moves on shore though. Uh, here is our storm surge map here very briefly. As you can see, uh, they're in south, 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 coastal Texas. We're expecting one to three feet of storm surge. M move a little bit northward where our low pressure center is probably going to move on shore. We're going to see two to four feet storm surge. And then as you move even further, Further north, we see three to five feet storm surge, and then all the way north there by High Island uh, and maybe areas just further, a little bit further south than that, we're expecting one to two feet of storm surge. Uh, this is experimental, so take it with a grain of salt, but this is the potential impacts we are expecting here. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on, take a look at the European model's total rainfall, the GFS model's total rainfall. Uh, and also the Canadian model's total rainfall, and then we're going to go in the same fashion and take a look at the total winds. And then we're going to take a look at that new invest coming off of Africa. All right, so here is our European model's total rainfall. Basically, anywhere in the grays and greens, we're under half an inch of rain. Those blues up there, that's where we're expecting half an inch to an inch of rain. The yellows is an inch to two inches of rain. The reds is two to five inches of rain. The browns are 5 to maybe, I would say, 10 inches of rain. And then those blue shades is where we're expecting 10 to 15 inches of rain. So we are expecting some scattered 10-inch uh, amounts or more there for the southern, southern portion of Texas there. It's a very tropical region, so this isn't like unheard of amounts of rain. That's still very major, though. The GFS model, though, however, does think that it will be a bit worse. As you can see, the same color shadings, except for we have purples here, which is 15 to 20 inches plus of rain. And I can actually see here that the maximum uh, on this whole model run here is 19.34 inches of rain there, somewhere in those purples. That's a lot of rainfall, guys. That's approaching 20 inches of rain. That's major flooding, potentially, and that's to go along with the storm surge could create some very major problems. However, as we look at the worst of the three models, however, sometimes it's right, the Canadian model, uh, we see that there is kind of minimalistic amounts of rainfall here, maybe just over 10 inches of rain there for very far southern Texas. Anywhere north of that is at about three inches or less. So uh, we can hope for the Canadian model and uh, be prepared for the GFS model solution there. All right. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and do the same thing, but for total wind. And then we're going to get into that new invest offshore of Africa. All right. Here we are taking a look at the accumulated max wind gusts. Uh, and this is in miles per hour. According to the European model, so this is the entire model runs maximum winds. Uh, so this isn't for one hour. This is for 78 hours, actually. The maximum winds at any given location we'll see at any point. Anywhere in the blues, you're under 34 mile per hour winds. Not saying that's not a lot, but you're under that amount. If you're in the greens, you're at 34 to about 50 mile per hour winds. So you can see that basically the southern half of Texas is expecting 34 mile per hour plus gusts. In the yellows, we are expecting 50 mile per hour plus gusts. So you can see for most of the coast there, maybe I'd say about half of it. And then the southern quarter of Texas, we are expecting to see at least 50 mile per hour gust. In the reds, you're expecting anywhere from about 58 to 70 mile per hour wind gusts. So that's a pretty thin band there. But yes, there is some areas in there. In the browns, we're expecting 70 to about 80 mile per hour gusts. And in the pinks, we're expecting 80 to about 100 mile per hour wind gusts, but I can see that the maximum wind gust here is 109 miles per hour. Is this a little uh, high? I, I would say that it is a little high, maybe about by 10 miles per hour, because as we move towards the GFS, we see similar amounts here, except uh, the maximum here is about 90 miles per hour, making their way just on short of the southern Texas coast, uh, whereas the European model brings it very far inland. And again, the Canadian model following suit with the same fashion that it had for the rainfall. It is the most minimalistic model here that we can hope for. Uh, and as you can see, we only see about the oranges to reds move on shore, which would be a massive difference because this is about a maximum of 70 miles per hour instead of a maximum of 110 miles per hour. So that's a huge difference, obviously. Uh, we do expect it to be closer to the higher end, though, unfortunately. So prepare for the European model solution, but hope for the Canadian model's solution. I hope that makes sense. Let's go ahead and move on and talk about our invest. But I really do want to push the fact, guys, if you are in coastal Texas or maybe inland southern regions of Texas, please, please, please be safe. Please pay attention to your current watches and warnings and also the impacts that the National Hurricane Center is expecting for your region. 
uh, because this could become a very dangerous situation. Again, it's a Category 1 hurricane at this point. All right, now here's your five-day graphical tropical weather outlook. We have a 50% chance of development here for our new tropical invest. This one probably has a better chance than Gonzalo, uh, so we will have to really track this one moving forward. And within the next week, it will be approaching either the Southern Caribbean or maybe curving into areas north of the Caribbean. Uh, a lot of things are on the table, obviously, at seven days out. So uh, the it kind of remains a mystery, but here is the spaghetti models. Uh, so a lot of options are on the table, but generally it is heading westward and we're going to need to track this one for the next few days, just like we had to do with Gonzalo and now Hannah as well as the tropics become very, very active. Now for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys yesterday, do you think any of these three storms will become our first hurricane? And I picked our first comment that said Hannah because I woke up this morning and Hannah was a hurricane. Jaden Farland, good call, man. It said, he said, I think Hannah has a shot at becoming a hurricane. Five people liked it. Seven people replied, probably saying it will not become a hurricane. But Jaden Farland, good, good call there. Definitely got it right this time. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.